Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I am back celebrating day two of Give Big Festivities. Uh, as a lot of you have seen, we have been all over Treehouse's social media to share how your donations really make a big, big difference for youth and kids in foster care. And today I am so honored to be here with Art, who is Treehouse's policy specialist for the foster care to prison pipeline. Hi, Art. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> um, before we get started, we have been so grateful to see how many community supporters have come out to support youth and pro, uh, youth and foster care who have stood alongside Treehouse to make sure that every school age youth across the whole state of Washington um, has access to our programs. And so as of May 3rd morning, we have raised over $51,000 um, for our work with youth and foster care. And I wanna give a big shout out to Nina, Erica, Craig, Andy, uh, Adam, Megan, Joyce, Nicholas. There's been so many folks who are continuing to make their gifts. And from now until midnight, we are really, really excited to say that we have a new matching challenge. So yesterday, we were really excited to double the impact of everyone's gift with a matching challenge. Today, we're keeping up all that big energy of Give Big, and all of today's gifts on May 3rd will be tripled. So if you go to treehouseforkids.org slash give big and make a donation, your match will be at 200%. Uh, so I really want to give a big shout out to First Tech Federal Credit Union, Janet, Lloyd, Armin, and Josh. Thank you so much for creating this matching challenge and for allowing each of us, no matter if we make a $1 gift or a $1 million gift, um, to make sure our impact is really shared widely across the state. So keep it coming. Visit treehouseforkids.org slash give big, and we will be doing give big all day long. <laughs> Um, so Art, I'm so glad you're here with us, um, making this time to share about your work. And I really want to give you space to just like share a lot about your programs. Um, could you share why Treehouse has started to focus on the foster care to prison pipeline? Um, yeah, Lindsay, thanks. Um, why Treehouse has started to focus on the foster care to prison pipeline, um, is a Good question. I think it came about through Treehouse executives' um, consciousness that they've been leaving out a whole important facet of the most disadvantaged foster youth. And those are the foster youth that are go a lot of times unseen because they're funneled into our state's carceral institutions. Um, and so it's, it also came with an acknowledgement that Treehouse has failed this youth in the past. Um, by just marking on their files, um, no longer on the on on their caseload. So, so the initiative came from an effort to kind of rectify this historic wrongs and not leave this vulnerable facet of foster youth behind, um, which isn't in insignificant. This is a large number of youth. These youth make up a a, a big percentage. The state's own numbers are that foster youth are 40% of our juvenile legal system, 40%. So by it, um, we started this because Treehouse's mission is educational equity for foster youth. Because historically, we just haven't given foster youth anywhere near the education that our state constitution mandates and that most other kids get in this state. Um, and that we are uh, taking that mandate into the state's institutions. And so that's that's why we started this. And that's why we're in there administering to those youth's education needs inside of those institutions. Thank you. I know that um, you and your folks on your team and the council that's been created have really um, come together and spent a lot of time focusing on youth that are currently in the pipeline system, but also just like what does the juvenile detention system look like for young people, both who are currently in it, but also adults that have gone through that and the impact of their life 
um, for many, many years. That's a huge order. <laughs> um, what are one of the one or two priorities of your work or the council this year? Oh, I, I appreciate the question. And, you know, for um, our, our listeners, like we just brought up the, the whole concept of a council and we, and we haven't really introduced it. So just um, so people know Trios is uh, uh, organized a council of, of list, uh, intergenerational council of, of lived experts, people who are raised in foster care and have, have cross institutional experience, you know, by juvenile legal system impacted to kind of, um, work on this problem to kind of inform. So one of the mandates we're after is to delineate what the foster care to prison pipeline is, right? We're talking about a pipeline, it's just a metaphor. What does that mean? Well, we, we are outlining exactly what it is, what the pathways into the in pipe of the system and what it looks like to come out the outside, which doesn't usually leave a youth out there. Because not only do foster youth usually make up 40% of our juvenile incarceration system, but they're also the highest youth demographic for recidivism. That's because we've institutionalized them, right? They're literally... So what it feels like to be a foster youth and, and to go into a carceral facility, I'd like and kind of like to what it would be if you were raised in a good family and had all the resources you need. When you show up at the university at 20 years old, you feel like you, you belong there. That's the way a foster youth feels like when they show up in a, in a into a, a juvenile prison. Um, unfortunately, that's what we're learning from the council and that's why we've instituted the council so we can get to these hard realities, face them, and begin to address them. So if we bring public consciousness to exactly what this pipeline is, what the pathways into it are, and explore intervention points and strategies on how we can derail this, this thing that isn't doing anyone any good. This isn't all just about foster youth. This is about the, for the goodness of our whole society, right? And the health of our, our, our whole community. Um, it's not doing anyone in our society any good to be pumping people out of our state systems that you know don't have the tools for success and it does us all good when we all can be successful including foster youth yeah so i, I so I, i'm sorry to get derailed but like your question was what are the two priorities so uh the one is to delineate so there's no question about it what this foster care to prison pipeline is make it clear and and then to and we will enter into conversations with our state partners and other organizations about how we can all get together and, and address. And this isn't really rocket science, right? Bits and pieces of this are known throughout the system, right? You can't be unconscious that foster care and our carceral facilities and our juvenile legal system have been inherent, you know, chronically connected throughout our history now's the time to address that and fix that and that's what we're doing that's what we're doing here at treehouse um and i just like to be clear like we are the only ones doing this work exclusively for foster youth and that and that's important because um foster youth have unique needs in this system that aren't being met one of them is con state constitutional denial of their right to an education we know from the recent House Bill 1295 report to the legislature that K through 12 education in our state's carceral facilities have been failing for as long as we can remember. So, uh, yeah, so those are our priorities to delineate what the pipeline is and to do something about it. I love that. And I love how you're sharing about each individual person connects to each other as one community. And so Treehouse isn't just coming in and helping or saving certain kids in certain places. It really is about that holistic nature of we're all in this work together. Uh, we are all one community. And when a youth um, goes through certain circumstances or gets a great education, it benefits us all to care about each other and to work with each other. So I think the work that you are doing alongside uh, staff, our policymakers, and the council 
um, is so critical and important. Um, what has that looked like to create and build the program for you this year? Um, well, first off, it's it's kind of been exhausting. Right? It, it takes a lot of bandwidth, but I, I'm grateful to do it because it, it, uh, I'm deeply passionate about this for my, for my own personal reasons. Um, but it also has been just so inspiring. Um, um, because so many facets of this experience that we're pulling from lived experts and articulating out to the community in ways that people that haven't been through that experience can understand um, is, is work that's just for the first time being done. And so, I mean, so people can understand why these things exist. Um, we have a, we have a, a juvenile rehabilitation system, a juvenile legal system that's based on holding youth accountable for their actions. And, you know, it could be argued rightly so. Um, but why do an, an inordinate or disparate number of foster youth end up here? Is it wholly because of the accountable of the action? Or are they coming from a state system that kind of funnels them along that path of, of failure? Well, we can answer that, you know, um, and, and, and we are. So um, I don't know if I got lost from your question, Lindsay, Lindsay or, or, or not. I um, No, I love this. I mean, I think when we've connected in the past, you've shared you know, you personally have a big passion for this work. You're working with alongside folks that have lived experiences um, in this pipeline. And so could you share what the council, the council meets regularly to create a framework for Treehouse, guide the organization as kind of experts of how this program should operate? Um, do you have anything that is kind of cooking up right now with the group that is really important to them? Well, right now we are, um, we are um, sectioning off each piece of the pipeline and analyzing it in depth and um, delineating what those are. Um, but, you know, what's just so inspiring working with this group is, um, you know, it's a community conversation. Um, it's kind of naked and and and, and raw, um, you know. Um, people's lives are 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 destroyed from this pipeline. It's not a a small thing. So um, there's just such a tremendous amount of passion in this community um, for people who've already been through the pipeline and 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 struggled through it and come out of it with some level of competence. Now they're on the council and working hard, um, not for themselves that um, so young people from the same circumstances going forward will not have to face this. So one of the most inspiring things of working with the council is the sense of community, um, the intergenerational sense of community and working together. Um, yeah, that, that this work right here in the you know heart of Treehouse is cultivating. It's, it's not often, um, where people with the lived experience of the foster care system, and especially those who intersected with the juvenile legal system, have a have a, a forum, uh, a platform to come together and work positively, right? Because usually, when you're in those circumstances, you're in a, a detention center or a juvenile prison. Um, so, I'm just really proud and um, of this work that we're doing right here in the in the heart of Treehouse. That Treehouse is facilitating it. It's important because um, no one else is going to do it. The state isn't going to do it. The state has had, you know, 125 years of state history um, and it hasn't happened and nor should it, right? This is where this work belongs. So, and we're doing it good and we're going to, we're, we have great results coming out of it. That's going to inform, inform our state systems. Yeah. I also, for folks that are watching on social media, uh, I want to share that you can definitely learn more about our work that Treehouse is doing, but a lot of folks are probably watching and saying, hey, I want to get involved. How do I help? Um, you can sign up to join our Advocacy Action Center. So 
a few minutes ago, Art shared that there was a bill in the legislature. When you sign up for our Advocacy Action Center, you get email alerts of ways to contact your representatives. It's extremely easy, but you keep your pulse on what's going on. And as a citizen and a voter, um, you can help move some of these bills along that really support youth in foster care, youth experiencing homeless, youth experiencing um, incarceration. So that's a great way to get involved if you don't have lived experience. Um, I want to give another shout out of a way to get involved today is give big. Um, supporting Treehouse financially is a big way that um, art, our program staff, youth with lived experiences, youth that are um, and our education uh, programs are supported. So today, all of our gifts are being tripled by our matching challenge fund. That is a great way to increase the impact of your gift and make sure that Art's work is sustained uh, across Washington State. Art, thank you so much. Uh, before we wrap up, I just want to give you space if you want to do or say anything else. <laughs> No, I, I, I just, um, I just, well, yes, I, I, I'd like to say how much I, I appreciate um, the support, um, how much I appreciate the support because, um, you know, our program lives and dies by that support. So um, sending in support for this isn't sending it to me, it's it's sending it for this work and this community of foster youth who are working diligently uh, to address this problem. For the, for the betterment of all of us, for the betterment of our whole community. Thank you, Thank Lindsay. Thank you so much for being part of this today. I'm just so glad that we have space to talk about this work. And hopefully there's just many more to come on social media and in our PR. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.